coming up next on The Jeff Crilly Show, you'll meet a true crime author who is going to tell us about his latest best-selling book. It's called The Meaning of Malice, his journey just ahead. Many are predicting that the worst is yet to come, which is unfortunate, said one person here. Until now, they've enjoyed the reputation of being the nation's icebox. Watched a burglar in his home this morning by webcam. As a journalist of over 25 years, stories are what make my world turn. Reporting live from the Dallas Newsroom tonight, Jeff Crilly, Fox 4 News. But in 2008, I took the jump from my familiar life and started a PR firm from my home. We're talking about anyone with a camcorder like the one I'm using becomes a television network. We started slowly growing the company and we now have over a hundred clients and we've branched into the world of live digital broadcasting. I now own eight different TV studios and have a huge team. And the stories that I now get to share are sometimes the most important of my life. Life has a funny way of coming around full circle. This is the Jeff Crilly Show. Well, as a retired journalist, I've always been fascinated with true crime. In fact, uh, many times during my news career, I was asked to take another look at a very famous case. These cases make the news and sometimes they're all over the news, but then over the period of time, they just drift away from the headlines. And it takes people like my next guest, John Leak, uh, true crime author, to resurface some old stories. So uh, John, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So when did you become fascinated with this particular uh, subject? I remember the, it perfectly. It was 1987. Um, I was sitting in the Highland Park High School cafeteria. A friend of mine walked up with a D Magazine, our local you know, monthly glossy magazine here in Dallas. And on the cover was a picture of Sandra Bridewell with a reference to the Black Widow of Highland Park. And this struck me particularly hard because I knew Sandra. I lived down the street from her. It quickly became apparent that the D Magazine story did not explicitly state that she had murdered anyone, but it was clearly an implicit suspicion that was presented in the D Magazine cover story. So ever since then, that was May 1987, I've been interested in this story and have followed it. Wow, okay, I'm gonna hold up the book cover and we're gonna put it up full screen. First of all, I love the, the cover art. Uh, the full title is The Meaning of Malice on the Trail of the Black Widow of Highland Park. How long did it take you to write the book? Um, I really got engaged in researching it in 2007 when the subject of the book, Sandra Bridewell, that's her, on uh, her third wedding day. Um, Sandra was arrested in North Carolina um, under federal charges of identity theft. She'd moved in with an elderly lady in the guise of being a Christian minister and, and missionary and stole the lady's identity, got into her finances, her credit cards. When Sandra was arrested and put into pretrial detention, that's when I really engaged in a serious research way. Sure. Um, so I've been looking at this off and on since 2007. Okay, much more on his research in a minute. We found a, a news story, and this was done um, a couple decades ago, but uh, let's go ahead and roll that. Mention the name Sandra Bridewell at a cocktail party in Marin or San Francisco, and you're likely to stop the conversation cold. Some say she is the most likable person you will ever meet. Others, who used to say that, now say they're afraid of her. And almost everyone says she has a quality that is absolutely mesmerizing. She has a, a very dark eyes that really, I believe, penetrates a, a, a person's mind. She has very hypnotic eyes. Uh, I, if I ever met her again, I certainly wouldn't want to look in her eyes. I would truly be frightened to. The woman with the hypnotic eyes is Sandra Camille Bridewell, a 45-year-old mother of three who has been widowed three times. She lived and moved among the wealthiest circles in Dallas, Texas, until scandal, death, and murder led her to move on. Three years ago, she came to the Bay Area, to the equally wealthy and exclusive Marin County community of Belvedere, renting a spacious and expensive apartment overlooking the Bay, right next to the San Francisco Yacht Club. That's where Tom and Sandra Finney met Sandra Bridewell, invited to her home for dinner by a mutual friend. A beautiful home furnished with um, period French antiques overlooking the um, Bay, sailboats at her door, and 
obviously very impressed with uh, her lifestyle and the way that she lived. Some weeks and another dinner party later, Tom Finney got a call from Sandra Bridewell. There was a problem, she said, at her Dallas bank. The FDIC happened to be investigating this bank and that her trust was frozen and that she could not get any money. And as a result of this, she was unable to pay her rent. She was unable to pay tuition for the, her, uh, her kids at this, at this school. And if she could have a very short-term loan. Tom Finney said yes. And over the next several weeks, says he loaned Bridewell more than $70,000 and has the canceled checks and wire transfers to prove it. When the money was not repaid, Finney finally sued her in March. Bridewell's lawyer filed papers claiming any money was a gift. But Tom Finney is not the only one suing her. Dennis Kuba, a Santa Rosa attorney, once dated Bridewell and is also suing her for unpaid loans, he says, total nearly $24,000. Kuba declined an interview with New Center 4. Friends say he's too embarrassed. And the Finneys say two other Bay Area attorneys are even more embarrassed. An attorney in San Francisco that uh, Miss Bridewell um, owes around $300,000 to. And from there, it goes to another attorney. She really likes attorneys uh, that I believe she owes uh, $37,000 to. And he was dating her for about six months. Neither attorney would sure. discuss Sandra Bridewell with New Center 4. But the Finney's investigation didn't stop here in the Bay Area. They checked into Bridewell's past in Dallas and soon learned of a cover story on her in a Dallas publication called D Magazine, a report titled The Black Widow from May 1987. It seems Sandra Bridewell came from very modest means, but married into some money and also tragedy. Her first husband, a society dentist named David Stiegel, killed himself in their home in 1975. He slit his wrists and fired a bullet into his brain. Husband number two, Bobby Bridewell, a hotel developer, died of cancer in 1982. And that's when the gossip and scandal started. She was remodeling their home in Highland Park, had no care about how he felt. It was, it was so bad that um, Bobby Bridewell's father had to take him out of the home and put him into a motel that he owned. The gossip might have stopped there, if not for the death of Betsy Bagwell two months later. Betsy Bagwell was the wife of the Dallas cancer specialist who had treated Sandra's husband. On the afternoon of July 16th, Betsy left home to meet with Sandra Bridewell. Bridewell is the last person known to have seen her alive. Bagwell's body was found that night in her car near the Dallas airport, a single gunshot wound to the head. Her death was ruled a suicide by Dallas police, though she left no suicide note. New Center 4 has now learned the FBI has been investigating Bagwell's death as part of a larger investigation of Sandra Bridewell. And we've learned the FBI took the highly unusual step of issuing a warning to a San Francisco woman who was a close friend of Sandra Bridewell. She has asked that we not use her name. She says the FBI told her to end all contact with Sandra Bridewell, to never be alone with her, or she could be the Betsy Bagwell of San Francisco. The investigation doesn't stop there because Sandra Bridewell's third husband was murdered. Alan Rarig was 10 years younger than Bridewell when they married in December 1984. Less than a year later, they were separated and headed for divorce. On December 7th, 1985, Rarig told a friend he was going to meet Bridewell and was never seen alive again. His body was found four days later, locked inside his Ford Bronco near the airport in Oklahoma City, three hours drive from Dallas. He'd been shot twice, once in the head but not robbed. Enter Oklahoma City Homicide Detective Sergeant Steve Pacheco, who is still investigating the Rarig murder. I talk with him by telephone. Sergeant, what stands out in your mind most from your interview with Sandra Bridewell? That she was not truthful with us. Why do you think that? Well, there are several things that, uh, several questions we had asked her that uh, we found out uh, later that she had lied to us about. Uh, she had told uh, Alan that she was pregnant uh, prior to them getting married. Well, we found out later uh, that she had had a uh, hysterectomy about 10, 10 to 12 years prior to that. She has not cooperated ever since that first interview. Uh, she has not cooperated with us. Whenever we go to talk to her, she's always uh, 
hire an attorney, and uh, the attorneys will not let us interview her or her family. So then it's fair to say she's still a suspect in her husband's murder? We have not eliminated her as a suspect at homicide. No, we have not. Mm -hmm. And New Center 4 has learned that following her husband Alan's murder, Sandra Bridewell took a polygraph test at the request of her attorney. We've learned from our sources that Bridewell failed the polygraph on two key questions. When asked, do you know anything about Alan's death, Bridewell answered no. The polygraph indicated she was not telling the truth. And when asked, did you kill him, again, Bridewell answered no. Again, the polygraph indicated she was not telling the truth. We've tried repeatedly to contact Sandra Bridewell and her attorney. They have not returned our calls or responded to our letters. Meanwhile, the police and FBI investigations continue. And I want to point out again, that was in some years ago, and it's unusual in TV news to dedicate that much of the 10 o'clock news to one story, but certainly there's enough to fill at least uh, uh, your book. I mean, well, and re remember, Jeff, this is after she left Dallas sure. and moved to Marin County. The focus of my book, I, I, I recount her Marin County, her Bay Area adventures, but the focus of my book was Sandra's life in Dallas. Wow. And um, what she was doing out in the Bay Area was meeting married men asking to borrow money and then not paying them back. That was her primary sure. approach to this in the Bay Area. In Dallas, she fell under suspicion for committing three murders. Um, now, what's complicated about it is the first two, the medical examiner ruled suicide. That those two are really the primary focus of my book. And uh, w what's your view on how the cops have handled these cases? They didn't investigate at all. Um, the first husband was found in his bed. They drew back the covers. His left hand was lying on a pistol. A, a very superficial glance at the, the death scene suggested to them that he'd committed suicide and they did not perform an investigation. I mean, the entirety of their investigative activity was on the morning he was found. Um, so quickly ruled suicide by the Dallas County Medical Examiner. Seven years later, Betsy Bagwell, the wife of a prominent oncologist here in Dallas, she was found shot to death at the Love Field Airport. By her own admission, she had just given Sandra a ride to the Love Field Airport. Wow. And she was found st apparently slumped over in the passenger seat of the car with a, a, a revolver in her right hand. Again, they looked at it, kind of looked like a suicide. Medical examiner concluded there was a contact gunshot to the head. So based on a very superficial analysis, again ruled suicide. Now, no one in Highland Park believed that Betsy Bagwell had committed suicide. And what I examined, I would say the Bagwell death is the moral and dramatic heart of this story. I grew up in this community. I know all of these people. Um, the uh, Betsy Bagwell, her husband was my grandmother's oncologist. So in many ways, it's a story about Highland Park society sure. with a strong element of concealment. And are these cases considered closed? And if they are closed, can they be reopened? Um, the medical examiner told Dr. Bagwell um, that he would be open to re-examining his suicide ruling. It's another level of intrigue in this is why wasn't there a re-examination? Especially, so Betsy Bagwell was found shot at Love Field in 1982. Just two and a half years later, after Sandra had fallen under suspicion in Betsy's death, Sandra's third husband, a young fellow from Oklahoma who had just arrived in Dallas the day before he met her and knew nothing about her notorious past. He is murdered. Okay. Wow. So when Alan was murdered, one would think that that would naturally prompt a re-examination of these earlier deaths, but there wasn't one. Uh, you must be very disappointed in the system. Um, as you dig into this, you're like, it, the ball was dropped on so many different levels, wasn't it? Um, I think um, law enforcement um, was, the, that is to say, the Dallas police were hoping for cues from the Highland Park community in which these deaths were happening. One of the things that I 
seriously, thoroughly examine is the way our little close-knit society in Highland Park is failing to communicate with the Dallas police. I mean, I believe the Dallas police and medical examiner could have done a much more professional and thorough job, but they are um, suffering from this lack of receiving information from the community. And, and as I put it sure. to some of Betsy's friends, how is law enforcement supposed to know about suspicious circumstances if no one is telling law enforcement about the suspicious circumstances? Sure. And you've gotten a fair amount of publicity about this. We're going to uh, pu pull up the People newspaper um, with a, a nice uh, article about you, John. Do you, do you feel like uh, people who know stuff uh, over time, their allegiances change, uh, their loyalties change? I mean, are you hoping that somebody comes forward with more information? Um, at my website, authorjohnleak.com, um, um, I am hoping that people who possess additional information will come forward. And they may not even themselves know the significance of the information. It may require that I connect it with some other things that I, I know about. But anyone who remembers these cases from 1975, David Stiegel, 1982, Betsy Bagwell, 1985, Alan Rarig, I welcome you to come forward and submit um, a, a notice on my website, authorjohnleak.com. You do a fair amount of speaking as well. We've got a picture of you out there in the community speaking. Uh, what's been the reaction to, to this story? Are, are some of them uh, hearing it for the first time? Uh, no one in Highland Park is hearing it for the first time. Um, it's quite funny. Um, uh, I've had ladies say, you know, I didn't attend a funeral because I was wanting to, to read the next line or people blowing off dinner dates. And so it's really, it, it, I'm, I know this sounds like I'm tooting my own horn, but it's the truth. It's the talk of the town in Highland Park. Um, I'm hoping uh, that we will start getting some greater interest in the book beyond my immediate community. And you actually had um, some detectives relook at some of these pictures? I am, um, I, from my work as a true crime author, have formed um, uh, very good working relationships with forensic scientists. Uh, one lady um, who I mentioned in the book was the head of physical evidence at the Los Angeles County Crime Lab. Another, another uh, criminalist um, is a former FBI profiler. They're both now retired, but still in full possession of all of their knowledge and skills. Both of them helped me to examine all of the elements. Most importantly, the most important research that I did with their assistance, I obtained the original death scene photographs from 1975 and 1982, Sandra's first husband and Betsy Bagwell. Those photographs, in my estimation and in the estimation of my forensic consultants, display numerous indications that these were not suicides these were homicides wow it's so compelling we're, we're gonna have to have you back again if you have any information uh, for john go ahead go to his website give him uh, more information that website is authorjohnleak.com john thank you for sharing this with us thank you jeff you bet that's it for now we'll see you next time